Today I'd like to talk to you about how God rules over all of creation through two different areas or realms or what theologians sometimes call his two kingdoms. Today in our country there seems to be so, so much divisiveness among us and I think sometimes Christians exacerbate the trials that we have in our world because we're not clear in our understanding of how God rules over the whole world, but he does so quite differently in these two realms or kingdoms. So let me show you what this means. God indeed is in control over the whole universe. We might call it his left-hand kingdom and his right-hand kingdom. Now the left-hand kingdom is all of creation. And God here sustains life for all of his creation. He wants to also give order so that people are protected, and he does this through the law. Now, the building blocks of creation of society is family and community. And, of course, we need government to help enact laws and also to help us produce a good economy so we can provide for our families. God is in control of the left-hand kingdom. He's also in control of what we know as his right-hand kingdom, the church. And here, God is working out his redemption for those who believe. He gives new life by the Holy Spirit, and he gives faith not by the law, but by the gospel. And for those of us who are members of this right-hand kingdom, we've become a part of the body of Christ. There's a unity to us. And our life is described this way, where it's a life of worship and of fellowship with other Christians and, of course, service to our world. Likewise, the Christian is part of both of these two kingdoms. We're part of his right-hand kingdom by virtue of being a new creation in Christ through our baptism. And we're part of the left-hand kingdom by virtue of being part of creation made in God's image. And we know, of course, that the world is broken and sinful, but even so, God still provides for us. Now, what does it mean to live in both of these kingdoms? Well, over the centuries, Christians have sort of mixed this up in different ways. And let me show you three main ways in which we might misunderstand what it means to be a member of God's right-hand kingdom as his uh, child and also left-hand kingdom as part of his creation. Some Christians have sought isolation from the world. They separate God's two kingdoms. They see the world as evil, and it is their duty to withdraw from anything worldly, whether that's government or culture, music, whatever is a part of the world, they see it as evil. So Christians need to isolate themselves from the world. And some of the examples over the centuries that you can see is the monastic movement or the Amish. Another way that we confuse uh, living in these two kingdoms is the exact opposite, that is immersion in the world. Here we see uh, the world, creation, having human institutions, and we basically see the church as a human institution too. And it's the idea that the church must become acceptable to the culture, that the church has to evolve with the, the different norms of culture. And some of the examples of, of this confusion in the past has been the church growth movement and very liberal theology. In this type of confusion, the church loses its, its identity as the body of Christ. We're living in the here and now with no view of eternity. And then the third way that Christians can confuse what it means to live in both kingdoms is this idea that the church needs to conquer the world. This idea suggests that the church was created to build an earthly kingdom for God. And this is mostly seen in highly politicized Christianity. The idea is that the church must overcome the world and impose its faith on society. But when we do this, we confuse God's two kingdoms, and also we confuse law and gospel. Remember, you can't become part of God's kingdom by obeying the law. It must come by grace through faith. When this happens, the church loses its mission. Our mission is not to build an earthly kingdom for God. Our mission is to make disciples of all nations. So what does it look like then to truly live faithfully in both kingdoms as God's child? Well, it looks something like this. 
In the right hand kingdom, Christians live with fellow believers by virtue of being a new creation in Christ through baptism. And we also at the same time live with unbelievers by virtue of being part of God's creation in the left-hand kingdom. We have all been made in God's image, even though that image is broken and our world uh, needs redemption. Now, when Christians debate over uh, divisive issues today, it would be helpful if we're clear in our minds what kingdom we're talking about and not confuse the two or try to mesh the two together. Also, as we think about the right-hand kingdom and the left-hand kingdom, uh, the right-hand kingdom, our citizenship as God's people, ought to influence the way that we participate in the left-hand kingdom. It's not as if we get to live in one kingdom as a Christian and then completely ignore our faith when we live in the left-hand kingdom. No, our faith and love for God, his truth that's been revealed to us, ought to influence the way that we participate in the left-hand kingdom. Now, let me give you an example of sometimes how this can be confusing and how sometimes we can exacerbate the divisions among us by not having a clear understanding of how God rules in these two kingdoms. And the example that I'm going to use is illegal immigration. Now, let's begin with the right-hand kingdom. In the right-hand kingdom, God calls his people to a unity of belief. We look to the scriptures as God's uh, revelation to us that we might understand uh, his uh, knowledge and his will for us. And we know from the scriptures uh, and from Christ that we are to love our neighbor no matter who that is that we're also to care for the sojourner and the exile who lives among us. Scripture is very clear that because Israel were once exiles and sojourners in this world, that when they received the, the promised land, that they too were to care for the exile who lived among them. And we know then as Christians that there is no specific nationality in being part of the kingdom of God and his right-hand kingdom, but rather every race, tribe, and tongue belongs uh, to God in this kingdom by faith, and that they are our brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, when we move over to the left-hand kingdom, here, instead of unity of belief, there might be some differences among Christians on what is the proper policy. And here I want to stress that when we're talking about left-hand kingdom issues, sometimes two very devout Christians who love the Lord might not see the same way on how we ought to live this out in the left-hand kingdom, in the earthly realm. So, for instance, on this topic, Christians might debate whether we should have open or closed borders whether we should just go ahead and legalize the uh, illegal immigrants that are here today, or if we should deport them first and have them come through the regular channels. All these things we can debate among ourselves. But I, I use this as an example to show how we ought not to conflate these two kingdoms together. No matter how we might disagree in left-hand kingdom issues, uh, the right-hand kingdom of God ought to influence our left-hand uh, views and stances. And we also are not uh, given a pass on what God calls us to do for all people. We are to love everyone, even the illegal immigrant, in our midst. Now let me close with a couple of Bible verses to put this all in perspective. And that is the perspective of God now who loves creation, continues to care for his creation, but wants his creation to come to know and trust in them so that we might become part of the right-hand kingdom, part of his church. Hebrews 11, which is the great faith chapter in the Bible that describes all the great uh, uh, forefathers and foremothers of our faith that were strong in the faith, uh, says this right in the middle of the chapter. It says, all these people were still living by faith when they died, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. They were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. I love that verse because it, it helps us to keep in perspective what we are all about. 
no matter what nation we live in, as Christians, we are wanderers and sojourners on this earth, that we are longing for a better country, an eternal kingdom, and that is where our, our sight should remain. Philippians 3 puts it this way, But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Well, this is a very brief outline and discussion about how God rules over all of creation through his two kingdoms. But in the future, as you begin to debate about different items in our society today, take a pause, stop and remember how God rules through these two kingdoms and begin with the right-hand kingdom. What does the word tell us about our role as Christians? And then let that influence um, the policies and, and decisions that are made in the left-hand kingdom. Thanks so much for watching.